Joining us now is the chairman of the House Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Intelligence, New York Republican Peter King. Uh, thank you very much, Congressman, for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. So let's get right into this American connection part. We're watching the developing uh, events there on the ground. We have a reporter there. We're using our analysts. But this twist about maybe there are some of them connected back here. We're hearing Minnesota. Now, I had done some investigative work up there. There's the cot trade, that amphetamine-based route, the Wahala system, the money system, the concerns that money's getting sent back to North Africa. But what do you know about a potential connection between what's happening in Kenya now and people back here in the U.S.? You know, when I was chairman of the Homeland Security Committee two years ago, I had two hearings involving Al-Shabaab and their activities in the uh, St. Paul, Minnesota area. Chris, there's been about 40 or 50 young Americans uh, who left St. Paul uh, and Minneapolis to go to Somalia to be trained. In some cases, there was evidence that there were people in the mosques who knew about this. It was actually a facilitation process. Of that 40 to 50 who have gone over to be trained, we think at least 15 of them have been killed in fighting over in Somalia. The concern, as was said before, is that any of these will come back into the United States or will be in contact with operatives here in the United States. The FBI has been concerned about this. I'm assuming that uh, they are right now really on top of the situation in St. Paul and Minneapolis to see if there's any phone calls that were made, any type of contact, any type of travel back and forth that's been suspicious over the last several months. But these are trained terrorists. These are Americans who went to Somalia to be trained as terrorists by al-Shabaab. Well, it's bad if we are exporting terrorists and money from here to help efforts abroad. Also equally concerning if we are basically home growing in the United States, people to do attacks like this here. Any concern of that type of coordinated effort? No, I was very concerned. That's the reason I held the hearings two years ago. And we had a, uh, a father, actually a man who raised one of the young men who had gone to Somalia uh, to be trained, and he wanted to come back to the United States. He realized he had done the wrong thing, and he was killed while he was over there, assumedly by uh, al-Shabaab, -El because that's who he was training with. And uh, the father was telling us how difficult it was to get the support in the community that, that he wanted, uh, that actually people in the mosque were intimidated, told not to cooperate with the police or, or the FBI. Now, the overwhelming majority of them are outstanding people but there definitely is this element and the question it was only recently the State Department even agreed to declare El Shabaab a terrorist organization because they had they were maintaining for a number of years that it was just confined to a civil war situation in Somalia but as we see these are terrorists who go beyond their borders and this attack in Kenya was extremely sophisticated probably the most sophisticated attack of this type since Mumbai well, let me ask you this you know El Shabaab uh, loosely translated is the youth right and this is an idea of this is the new wave of uh, terrorist organizations there. What does this mean in terms of the choices the United States have to make, has to make about where to get involved? You know, a couple of weeks ago it was, should we get after Syria? Now you have these attacks uh, going on in North Africa. There's so many choices to make about what to get involved in and what not. Do you believe that this is a situation that calls for direct mil military support, military action to help stop something like this? I think it requires intelligence support, it requires training, it uh, requires cooperating in an intelligence manner. Uh, for instance, you have al-Shabaab is also trained with al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula in, in Yemen. It's had involvement with Boko Haram in Nigeria. And obviously we can't be sending troops to all these places, but I think we can provide some support on the ground, uh, certainly give them intelligence, give them weapons if, that's, you know, if, if uh, that's important, but also training, training the local police, training the local armies, finding the elements within those societies we can work with, but realizing that this is, especially in Africa right now, in Nigeria, in uh, uh, Somalia, in Kenya, and then joining up with uh, uh, Al-Qaeda in Yemen, these, these are, are, are real threats to the U.S., but you're right, we can't be sending troops everywhere. We have to refine how we do it. We have to have our intelligence agencies work with people on the ground, and we have to provide technical assistance and training to those elements that we feel we can trust. But keeping in mind that I think too often we think because bin Laden is dead, that somehow the, you know, the threat from uh, Islamic terrorism is gone. It's not. It, in many ways, it's more dangerous than ever because it's morphing and metastasizing in, in many countries in, uh, under many different names, whether it's Iraq, whether it's uh, Mali, whether it's Libya, whether it's Yemen, whether it's Somalia, whether it's Nigeria, all of these countries. Well, but on the flip side, Congressman, and that's why there's concern on the American public side when they hear that, oh, maybe this is a situation that will demand military action. I mean, that was a lot of the pushback on Syria, don't you think? And now when we see this attack in Kenya just brings that issue into focus is that America is going to have to make choices about where it decides to dedicate resources. 
Yeah, we do. But again, I think that we can uh, sort of push off any need for military assistance if we can get involved at a much lower level. As far as a uh, lower level, I'm saying more behind the scenes, mm -hmm. as far as in, uh, supplying intelligence, providing training, not putting our boots on the ground, but uh, finding elements that we can work with in Somalia, working with the government. For instance, in uh, Yemen, the government has, be, has been cooperative. In Somalia, we've made progress. Uh, again, working with the African Union and other uh, other troops, other uh, support groups. We can't be going everywhere, but on the other hand, we can't be isolationists and withdraw. But I would say right now, if we, we can confine it to intelligence type operations and also to, again, providing training and uh, uh, assisting those groups that we feel that we can work with. It's a window into how these, com these uh, decisions are getting more complicated. Representative King, thank you so much. Always a pleasure yeah, yeah. to have you on New Day. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.